The mission of the Materials Research Center is twofold. The first part of the mission is really to foster interdisciplinary materials research. And that means we involve faculty from across uh, campus in many different departments. Uh, and the other part of the mission is that we provide access to analytical equipment that's too expensive or difficult to maintain for individual faculty labs. The Materials Research Center maintains state-of-the-art equipment for characterizing materials. And we really do that to enable the success of the investigators that work in the center. For them to be able to be competitive with their research proposals, either to companies or government agencies, we have to be able to characterize materials in a way that is, is competitive with, with other institutions. With faculty from many different departments, you can imagine that we have a lot of different types of activity going on. Materials in extreme environments behave very differently than our everyday experience. We often see very new and unpredictable phenomenon. And it's in those phenomenon in which we are able to discover new behaviors that enable the technologies of tomorrow. We started a project with the Advanced Research Projects Agency for Energy, or RPE, to advance the materials and the manufacturing techniques to create ceramic heat exchangers. The Materials Research Center has recently uh, provided seed grant funding to help our research group uh, develop some of the preliminary data that would be necessary to resubmit a proposal that was recently deemed as high risk, and we'll be able to demonstrate some of the preliminary data to eliminate that risk and hopefully resubmit that and proposal and get it funded. The research that we do is uh, chemical processing of materials, especially using uh, electrochemistry, electrodeposition, and spin coating to produce highly ordered metal oxide semiconductors and catalysts. So we're using both electrochemistry, electrodeposition, and spin coating. And both of these are solution processes. So there's no high vacuum, no high temperature. You can control the potential, the pH, you can use additives, and you can get different orientations, different shapes, different compositions just by changing these things. So it gives you a lot of different handles, different levers that you can pull to uh, tailor these materials. Therospheres uh, is the name of glass microspheres. They're about one-fifth or one-third the diameter of the hair on your head. And they're injected into patients that have inoperable liver cancer. And these beads are made radioactive so that when they go into the liver and get stuck in the tumors, they irradiate and kills those tumors. We use the uh, tumor as a filter. And so now you have, ideally, these glass microspheres in all of the tumors that might, may be in the liver. One human dose contains about 8 million of these little glass microspheres. At Missouri s and we study a lot of materials, materials um, for health, bioactive materials that can treat cancer and wounds. We study materials uh, for um, extreme conditions, materials for energy, infrastructure, and so on. So computational science is really, really plays um, an increasingly important key in the research. It's sort of an independent area, but at the same time we work together with experimentalists and other researchers in order to not only explain what we observe in materials, but also to predict and design new materials that might help us in the future. Computers help us model uh, the materials and their behavior in a very efficient way. And to expand our efforts, we are very excited to have a new grant uh, from the National Science Foundation. It's a, about two million grant to acquire and build a new cluster that will be called the Foundry. And that computational power will um, exceed the previous cluster by a significant amount. It's going to be 320 teraflops. So I study various aspects of um, the radiation interactions with matter from fundamental radiation uh, interactions of neutrons and ions and solids to developing new materials for nuclear reactors and nuclear systems. Ion beams are a really um, rapid way, a really, a really cheap and rapid way to uh, mimic some of the radiation effects. Um, we can achieve essentially 
the equivalent of something like many years of radiation exposure in a reactor within a period of maybe minutes or hours. Another application of ion beams is to actually change and alter material properties. So one of the projects we're working on is trying to manufacture um, photonic materials using a combination of ion irradiation uh, and then chemical treatments. The Materials Research Center puts together a lot of experts um, from different areas of materials research, uh, materials science and other disciplines, uh, and we have a an availability of many different techniques at our disposal that we can use to um, synthesize, character, characterize, and alter materials. So we have a, you know, a pretty complete suite of uh, state-of-the-art equipment for characterizing materials. We have to maintain our, our equipment and acquire new equipment to remain competitive, but we also have to explore new research areas. And so providing seed grants to early career faculty is one way that we can sustain the, the research competitiveness of campus. That we provide them the resources to explore their new ideas and their new concepts and then get funding and build programs around their expertise. 